In this video, we are going to discuss the zero order hold. Suppose we have this kind of system H and we apply a signal to H and that signal is the signal R, the set point or a reference value. And after this signal R, we place a so-called sampler, which is indica indicated by this switch over here. So here at this point, we get sampled values, which means that we have only values at the moment the sampler closes. So these, signal, um, these sampled signals are indicated by the star over here. So we have sampled values as an input of H, and the output of H is the signal C. So when R is, for instance, this signal, it indicates that at every point in time we have a signal value. So R is a continuous time signal, so at every point in time we have a value for R. But R star, which is sample value, only has values at the sample points. So only at the sample points we have a value, the sample value of R, and in between these sample points we do not have any uh, information. So the easiest way of having information in between sampling points is by uh, holding the sampling value of the first sample and then uh, hold that value until another sample point um, is taken and then hold that value again and then we get a, a signal which looks like this. We have a sample point, we hold it, we take another sample, we hold it, we take a sample, we hold it, etc. And that can be done by implementing a block over here which is called a zero order hold block. A zero order hold indicating that we hold the sample in between sampling points. So now we are going to look how we can design that zero order hold block. So first of all, um, let's define what is the function of the zero order hold block, which is, as I told earlier, holding the sampling value until another sampling point arrives. So we have to hold the value in between sampling point, and that is indicated by that signal, that green signal over here. So the next question is, how can we generate this kind of a behavior? Well, when we have a look to this kind of behavior, we see that we can make this zero or the hold behavior by defining a unity step and then subtracting another unity step, one sample delayed. So when this is my unity step, which is the red graph, and we subtract a unity step, one sample delayed, then we get this green expression. So then we have this kind of a response over here. So then we have the expression which we want to have from that zero order hold block. So defining and designing a zero order hold is defining a unity step and subtracting a unity step one sample delayed. And that is expressed by this um, equation over here. So the, the, the signal uh, in the time domain equals a unity step minus a unity step one sample delayed. So um, when we have that, we can go to the Laplace domain by taking the Laplace transform of this expression, which is the Laplace transform indicated by that L over here, Laplace transform of the unity step minus the Laplace transform of the unity step one sample delayed, which is indicated over here. So um, we can also write that in another way because um, the, um, the Laplace transform of a delay, so a delay of one sample, can be written as um, the transfer function of a delay, which equals e to the power minus s times t, in which s is the Laplace operator and t is equal to the sampling time. So we can write this expression as the Laplace transform of the unity step minus the transfer function of a delay, e to the power minus s times t, times the Laplace transform of a unity step. So now we can rewrite this expression. We can say, well, uh, y in the s domain is 1 minus e to the power s times t, minus e s times t, times the Laplace transform of a unity step. And the Laplace transform of a unity step is 1 over s. So then we get 
y in the s domain as 1 minus e to the power minus s times t divided by s. So 1 over s was the Laplace transform of the unity step. So that is the Laplace transform of that zero order hold block. So that is the, uh, um, the transfer function of that zero order hold. So let's call that transfer function of that zero order hold g o h. Then we can say that c equals h, my system block, times the Laplace transform of the zero order hold, which is g o h, which is expressed over here, times the input signal, which is the sampled signal r expressed by this star. So when we want to look to the sampled output value, for instance, when we look to a phantom sampler over here, then we can say the sampled output signal is the sampled signal over here, this expression sampled. So again, by this indication, uh, indicated star over here, which is equal to the sampled system times the sampled input signal. So we have to sample the complete system times the sampled input signal over here. So now we can go to the Z domain and we can say the Z transform of the output signal, sampled output signal C, equals the Z transform of that complete expression. So the Z transform of H times GOH, so the Z transform of H times the zero order hold, times the Z transform of the input signal over here. And keep in mind that the, the, zero, the Z transform of this complete system over here is not equal to the Z-transform of this block times the Z-transform of that block. It's not the same thing. So you have to take the Z-transform of this complete series block. So now we can say the Z-transform of the output signal is the Z-transform of that complete block indicated by H G O H in the Z-domain expressed over here, which is another way of writing this expression, times the Z, uh, um, the Z transform of my input signal R over here. So we have this expression, and now we can um, write that out. We can say C over R, so the transfer function of that complete sy system over here, equals the Z transform of my complete system over here, which is 1 minus e to the power minus sc over s times s. So this is a transform of the complete expression. And we can work that out and we can say, well, c over z is z transform of 1 over s times h, which is this expression, minus this minus the z transform of e to the power minus sc over s times h with this, which is this expression. So when we work that out, we can say it's the Z-transform of H over S, this expression, and then we get the definition of the uh, Z in the Z-domain, and we have said that Z equals e to the power SC, so Z to the power minus 1 is the definition of e to the power, the Z-transform of e to the power minus SC. Remember, that was the definition when we went to the Z-domain, the Z-transform uh, of e to the power minus ST is written as z to the power minus 1. So we can say this expression, this part of the complete expression is z to the power minus 1 times z domain of h over s. And remember this capital z is z transform and z to the power minus 1, that small um, z indicates a, um, a delay of one sample time. So uh, writing that out we get um, C over R equals 1 minus Z to the power minus 1 times Z transform of H over S. Okay, when we have that, let's look how um, the uh, zero order hold behaves in real time. So I'm going to do a simulation, small simulation in MATLAB, and I'm going to show what we expect from that zero order hold, but also what is a negative aspect from that zero order hold, because we have seen that in that zero order hold there is a delay. And you know a delay has always a negative impact on stability, on phase shift. It brings it gives much more overshoot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to simulate 
this continuous time um, um, system in which h is defined as 1 over s times s plus 1 or uh, 1 over s squared plus s I have a feedback system uh, made out of uh, h so I have um, a feedback system over here and then I'm doing the same simulation with that system over here but uh, when I implemented a zero or the whole function block in front of it with a sampling point over here so I'm going to see what the result ring bring in that case so I'm going to go to MATLAB and um, there I have a small script I'm doing uh, the simulation right going back to MATLAB here we are and first of all I'm going to show um, what the response of that continuous time feedback system will look like so I run this section and it will show the step response of that feedback system um, which I've shown you on the previous slide so there it is this is my response and that is the response of, the, of that signal this is the blue line now let's look what happens when we um, implement that zero hold in front of it so I run this section in which we have uh, implemented also that zero order hold over here and now we see in the red curve that we have much more overshoot due to that zero order hold so a step response to a system with that zero order hold um, um, gives you more overshoot because of that delay which is implemented in that zero order hold and now let's also look to um, the function of that zero order hold so I'll run this section and it shows really the behavior of that zero order hold which takes a sample over here holds it takes a sample of the blue signal over here holds it takes a sample hold it etc and then we get the green line so I've seen that a zero order hold um, is necessary for having a continuous time signal because we only take samples at sample points so we hold the signal in between uh, samples we do that with the zero order hold but um, a side effect is that yeah it may indicate or may lead to more instability aspects so we have to take that into account when we do stability analysis thank you for watching see you in the next video